In previous tutorials, we have implemented a wireless communication between two STM32 microcontrollers boards over LoRa and done a long-range test communication. Now it's time to use this implementation in real-world application. Today in this video, I'm going to share with you guys the wireless PIR motion security system that can be used for intruder event detection. So we need to interface the PIR sensor on one MCU and play silent sound on another one. Things are going wirelessly today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a professional PCB manufacturer where you can turn your dream project into an actual one with the help of their one-stop solution service that includes CNC machining, 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication, and injection molding. They are also celebrating their 8th anniversary with big discounts and free coupons. Their website link is in the video description below, so don't miss the chance. Alright, so here is the setup I am going to use uh, through this uh, tutorial. You can see here the PIR sensor I'm using with the 3D printed housing uh, I used. So you can see here the PIR sensor board inside and this part actually keeps it pushed inside. Uh, I will be sharing the STL files uh, in the description of this tutorial so you can guys uh, try it out. Alright, so it can be pushed this way. And as you can see, it's connected to the STM32 microcontroller through one single pin and it will be uh, configured as input pin on the CPU side. Alright, so the functionality that we are planning to achieve today is to let the STM32 microcontroller detect motion or silence with the help of this PIR sensor and then send this event over LoRa with the help of this uh, React LoRa module uh, wirelessly without any physical connection to the other board, which has STM32 microcontroller as well, which will play a siren sound using this buzzer you can see inside this uh, passive amplifier in case of motion detection done by the other board. And in overall, we have actually built a wireless security system. And of course, I will be testing the whole system at the end of this tutorial. So why don't you stick around? So now let's see how we are going to implement this system step by step. So let's get started. All right, so here's the PIR motion sensor that I'm going to use today. It's actually a very easy to use sensor because there is only one single pin we need to take care of, the output pin. So here the output pin will go to low when no motion is detected and high when motion is detected. Quite straightforward. Because this chip does all the work for us, uh, it interface with the uh, actual sensor, it does the measuring and the filtering, and here its name. Anyways, so it's actually a beginner level uh, module, but I had it laying around, so I'm going to go with it anyways. So yeah, the module has two potentiometers to set its behavior. One is going to be used to adjust the delay of the detection time, and we see this over here. The detection delay can go from 3 seconds to 5 minutes depending on the position of the potentiometer. Personally, I'm going to set it to 3 seconds because this is already quite long time for a microcontroller to deal with. And the other potentiometer is going to be used to adjust the motion detection range or the sensitivity of the module. Well, this setting will depend on the room I'm going to use this sensor in. Uh, it doesn't matter for me actually. So without any further ado, let's jump into our code and see how we are going to interface this uh, motion sensor. So here I've written a simple library in order to interface the motion sensor that I'm going to use, HCSR501. We can see first of all the initialization function, uh, status read, update status, and of course timer handling functions. Timing is a very important parameter that we need to deal with. So let me show you that with an example. Uh, I'm going to connect my logic analyzer to the output pin of the PIR sensor and read its voltage level when it detects motion and no motion event. Alright, so here is the logic analyzer I'm going to connect to the output pin of the PIR sensor in order to analyze the signal it generates on the output pin. Uh, we can actually even uh, connect an LED to the output pin of the PIR sensor 
and see how it would work when it detects motion actually yes uh, so a delay is actually generated uh, for around six or seven seconds uh, right after detection all right so right now as you can see i'm running the logical and laser interface and the sampling is going on uh, the PIR sensor output pin is connected to channel 0 of the logic analyzer and now I'm going to pu put my hand in front of the sensor and according to the readings that we are going to obtain we are going to build the algorithm that we are going to use to interface the PIR sensor properly in order to see how the PIR sensor will behave once it detects motion so here as you can see the detection has started and now currently I'm keeping my hand moving in front of the sensor so it's currently detecting continuous motion so we can take that event as a reference for us and according to that we can build our algorithm on the code so here I took several samples to see the behave of continuous motion and then when there is no motion you will notice that the output win will stay at zero level so now if we have a look at the timing of these uh, pulses we will notice that the on time segments and the off time segments are equal so in overall we have some sort of a signal to deal with so when designing the algorithm in our code to deal with this pattern we can wait for nine and a half seconds before deciding that the motion is ongoing or it stopped all right so now let's get back to our code and carry on with it all right so let's start with the pir sensor handling function where the all magic happens so first of all we check if the sensor is activated or not and then we check if the time has come in order to take a sample of the output pin of the pir sensor we check this uh, right over here quite simple function uh, and after that we update the status of the pir sensor and then we restart the timer depending on the status uh, that we have sampled over here so if a motion is detected we are going to follow the delay that we had analyzed on the logic analyzer otherwise we will continue taking one sample every 500 milliseconds and at the end of the execution of this function we see that the last sampled detection event status is returned back to the main function where it's going to be used to be sent later on over LoRa to the other board which has the siren on it to inform it about the motion detection event so now let's see how this handler function is used inside our main code so yes here we are uh, as you may have remembered I'm still using the same code that I've used in the LoRa transceiver project so if you are interested to learn more about uh, the LoRa module that I'm using uh, you can visit this link that will be showing over here alright so let's carry on with the current implementation so as you can see the handler will be called inside the while loop and the detected event no matter what it is it will be sent to over LoRa to the other module every 500 milliseconds and the sent packet here will be like this the U LoRa protocol that we had designed before so this is the packet that we are sending the packet will be having the ID and the detection status which is 0 or 1 1 for motion detection and 0 for no motion detection and of course the checksum to check if the received packet is not corrupted alright so let's get back and have a look at the code running on the siren board uh, and we have it over here I've actually written a simple sketch to interface the buzzer in order to output a siren sound uh, the sketch is over here it's quite simple uh, you can have a look at it use it in your project for your application and maybe develop it and merge it back to the main uh, repository so let's get back to the main uh, so as you can see here a flag will be detected once you LoRa PIR sensor detection packet is received to this board and then send back an acknowledgement packet to the main board update the timer and turn on the LED to indicate that the communication is ongoing and if the received PR detection event status is 1 the siren sound will be started to indicate for alarm uh, situation to inform us that there is movement on the PIR sensor board and once no motion is detected on the PIR sensor board the siren sound will be stopped and the whole system will be waiting for the next detection event to be received so by adding this simple sketch we have actually implemented a simple security system actually and yeah so now let's put everything on action and see how the whole system works all right so now the whole system is powered up uh, and as you can see the blue led is being toggled 
uh, indicating that the LoRa communication is ongoing. Currently, no motion event is being sent to this board uh, from the PIR sensor board, we, as we can see here. Uh, so now if we do a motion on front of the PIR sensor, mesh motion detection event is sent to this board and the silence starts. Here we can see the uh, signal sent to the buzzer. Uh, so now I'm going to put these two boards apart uh, and see how the whole system will work on action uh, in a real world situation. So yeah, let me show you. Okay, so now I put the PIR sensor board on a dining table uh, and the whole system is powered by this power bank. Uh, the PIR sensor is now uh, directed to my uh, home uh, door. So once this door is opened, uh, the siren on the other board uh, will be turned on, informing me that there's an intruder and the siren board will be placed in another room uh, close to me so I can hear it. Uh, we can do actually a test right now. So I'm moving my, yes, you can hear the sound from here. So now we know that the system is working. So now let's see how it will work in action. All right, this brings me to the end of this tutorial. I'll be sharing all the tutorial materials on my GitHub repository so you can check and review the code that I'm sharing with you guys. So if you have learned something new, please share this tutorial among your friends and tell them about useful electronics. Stay tuned for more awesome projects and bye bye.